Hey, so I thought I'd try something new because we've gotten a few questions on Twitter and Discord on uh, how our header on Framer.com was set up. So if you load Framer.com, uh, there's this dramatic effect of all of these sites rotating and fading and scaling in. Uh, and then we also have this hover effect on all of these images, which highlights the sites as you hover them. Uh, there's a slight delay on it, so it sort of creates this trailing effect, which is pretty cool. So yeah, I thought I'd show you how this was set up um, so that you could maybe use an effect like this in your own website. Um, so if I open up Framer, um, this is actually our, our own site project. So Framer.com runs on Framer. Uh, and this is sort of what that looks like on our front page. But to make this a little bit easier, I've isolated the header in a separate project. So uh, it's a little bit easier to follow along. And I can also provide you uh, a link to this project so you can uh, remix it and uh, maybe use it in your own site. So if we zoom in on the page here, you can see that I have uh, in the layers panel here, I have, let's close these layers. I have a ticker container, uh, which contains four ticker components. Uh, you can find the ticker component in the insert panel on the left under basics. There's the ticker component. You can just drag it in from there, but I've already set this up. So there's four tickers and what a ticker does, you can add content to it and uh, it will animate that infinitely based on some of the properties you give it. So you can am animate it left to right, right to left, up to bottom, etc. cetera. Um, and then we have four of these. So what I can do is I can connect it to the content that's over on the left here. So these are just a bunch of components um, with site images. I'll show you what the component does, but this sort of creates that hover effect. Um, but there's just a bunch of site images of sites that were made in Framer. So I can connect this using these uh, pin connectors over here. So going to connect the first ticker to the first row of content, second one to the second, third one to the third. And then there's a hidden ticker, which is slightly below the header. Um, so I can select that from the uh, layer panel and connect that one to the fourth one. The reason that this is here is because if we select the entire header in the, the layer panel, you can see that the entire uh, header takes up 100% of the viewport height. This means that if your browser grows in height, it's always going to show the entire header. So if our browser slightly grows uh, in height, there's going to be another row for the ticker below this. So shows another row of sites going by. Um, so yeah, if we preview this, you can see that we sort of already have part of the header. Um, the content slides left to right, right to left uh, at different speeds. Um, so you can actually select the ticker and then in the properties here, you can tweak the properties. So this one slides to the left at 25%. This one has slightly different properties, so it goes to the right 15%. Uh, and I've done the same for the other two tickers. Um, and then the other thing I've added is that hover effect that you see on the site images. So these are all one component um, with different images on it. So if I double click into one of these, you can see that there's two variants. Uh, the first variant is set to 0.5 opacity. And then the second variant is set to opacity one, but I've also slightly increased the brightness using a brightness filter, which you can add from the styles here, um, and a filter of saturation, uh, which slight, slightly bumps the saturation. So it sort of highlights the image even more. Then I've connected variant one to variant two by using the uh, interaction connector here. Um, and it's using a mouse enter event. So when my mouse enters variant one, it's going to transition to variant two. And I've done the same thing on variant two, but it's using a mouse leave event. So if my mouse leaves variant two, it's going to transition back to variant one. Another thing I've done is I've added a transition here, um, uh, which says when I 
when my mouse enters variant one, I want it to transition to variant two um, with a timing of 0 0.2 and using an in out, ease in, ease out transition. Um, and then on variant one, I've done the same thing, but I've told it to take one second to play that transition. So <clears throat> the transition back from variant two to variant one is going to take one second instead of 0 0.2 which sort of creates this delay in the transition. So if we go back and preview this again, you can see that it has this effect. So if we enter um, one of these images, it lights up and then it dims. So if we hover a bunch of these, you can see they all light up, but then if we wait a little bit, they all dim again, which is that sort of one second transition back to variant one. Then there's the overlay, which I've hidden for now, but we can bring that back by right clicking and going to show. So the overlay is just a gradient on top of it, which uh, contains the rest of the content. So it has the H1, also has a button so we can sign up. Uh, the overlay takes up 100% of the width of the header and 100% of the height. But adding this overlay creates a problem because this is now on top of the tickers and the uh, the hover interaction that we want. So if I go to the preview, you can see that we can now not hover the images anymore. But we can fix this by selecting the entire overlay and adding a pointer events property and then setting the pointer events property to none, which means that this layer is now not going to take any pointer events anymore, which means we can interact with the layers that are behind this layer. So now you can see the overlay is still there, but we can hover the images again. Um, but this also creates another problem because there's a button in the overlay that we want to click to sign up. Um, but because this entire layer doesn't have any pointer events anymore, the button also doesn't have any pointer events, so we can't click it anymore. But we can also fix this with the pointer events property by selecting the button and then once again adding the pointer events property and setting it to auto, which means it's going to return to the original value. So the overlay is now not going to have any pointer events, but the button is because it's so it's set to auto. So now we have all of the ingredients that we need. We can hover the images, the overlay is still there, and we can also hover the button so we can click it to go to the sign up page. <clears throat> and then for the final piece, we want to add the sort of dramatic appear effect that we have on framer.com. So if it loads, we want it to rotate, scale and fade in. We also want the text to appear with a slight delay. Um, so the way we add this is let's first do the tickers that are behind it. So I'm going to hide this layer again. I'm going to select the ticker container and then add an appear or add an effect to it, an appear effect. And I'm going to say, okay, when the page loads, I want this effect to play. So let's set this to opacity one for now. I want it to scale from 1.5 and I want it to rotate from minus 10. And then obviously also set the opacity to zero. Um, I'm going to use an ease transition. I'm going to set it to ease out. And I want this to take about four seconds. Um, so you can see when we preview this, it rotates, it scales, and it takes about four seconds. You can play it again. So now we just need that overlay. So let's show the overlay again. And we're also going to add an effect to this. So also appear effect on load. And I want this to go from skill one. And I want it to have a Y offset of about 50. So it slides in from the bottom a little bit. Uh, set the opacity to zero again, because we also want it to fade in. This one's also going to use uh, the ease out transition. 
um, I want it to take about one second, but I want this to come in slightly after the tickers um, appear. So I'm going to give it a delay of one, which means it's going to wait for one second after the page loads until it triggers this transition. Um, so now when we preview this, we should have what we have on framer.com. So the sites scale in, rotate in, and then one second later, the rest of the content comes in. We can hover all of these images, they light up. Uh, we can click the button. Um, yeah, that's pretty much how we, we set up the header on framer.com. Um, let me know if there's other parts of the site that you wanna see, uh, how, how it was set up. Uh, yeah, and uh, I might do more of these.